How's it? Welcome along to Basil's Garage um, for I think it's part four of the uh, Cub Cadet build. Uh, so in this episode we're going to concentrate on setting up the chassis uh, and getting the wheelbase 100% sorted um, and then we'll move on from there. So last time we pulled apart the, the, the chassis, we put it all together so you can see what it looked like. I've now stripped it apart and I've got the chassis sitting on the welding bench here uh, ready to start looking at. So what I did was Remember we had the small hole here, which we'd set up for the right height. So what I did was I then re-measured the holes to make sure that they were the same from there and there. And then I took the plates, the steel plates, and put them onto here. I actually used a, um, an engineer's square, made it square onto there, measured the distance, and then tack welded it in place. Uh, and they did the same on the other side. Uh, just making 100% sure that it was sitting level and straight to go. So the bearings that I'm using... Um, a self-aligning bearings uh, and they're 25 mil with a couple of allen keys to hold them on so the way they work is the two little pieces here squeeze together on the right side uh, and then you don't tighten them up until it's fully aligned and then um, it means that you're not going to have anything binding on them so um, I've just tapped the threads in, in these for the moment um, just put these in loosely These under here. So yeah, this is just so you can see how how we put the uh, the actual bearings in. So that's just sort of loosely in there. I'm just going to grab this axle and we'll just try and feed it through um, through here. And then hopefully we can get it lined up in the bearing there. The whole thing through. Okay, so that's now sitting in there. It's um, not perfectly in the centre, but you can see what we're trying to do. And then we just tighten up these. Okay, and now the axle sitting in there. The bearings are all good. It's all happy, and uh, it's all spinning. So the next thing we need to do is we need to look at how that. Uh, corresponds with the rest of the chassis. So I'm going to flip this over. Oh, and uh, we did talk about cutting off this. So I've actually marked now where I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to cut it across, and then I'm going to take the bottom off, lift it up, so it'll be welded back on here again, and it'll look just like the rear of the mower. So I'm just going to flip this over. Hopefully the axle won't fall out. Right. So we can now see what's happening underneath here. Um, I'm just going to grab a couple of blocks of wood, uh, which I had here earlier, and now I've lost. Um, right, so we've got that one, which goes in the front, and this one, which goes in the back. So this is just to make it a bit easier to work on. I just stick it under here. Um, and it'll sit there for the moment. Now, um, I'm going to grab my front axle. So, as you know, I make these axles, so if you want one, uh, let me know, I can build one for you. So we're going to put the axle in up the right way. So the axle is going to sit in the front here. So what I've actually done is I've actually taken a bit more out because um, of the way that the chassis sits. Uh, it's got a bit of a scallop on the front. So if I move it back a little bit, it'll sit square and slightly lower so it's all lined up. Um, I'm just going to throw this underneath here for the moment. Just sort of sit that pretty close to where we want it to be. Now, so what I did was I thought, right, I need to put some sort of bracing inside the frame. Um, so I measured from the end to the front of here, and I cut two pieces of steel. Okay, so, so this is not super strong steel. This is just to make it a bit stiffer. All the strength is actually in the chassis. So I cut these to the right left, and they go right to the back. Um, now I did have to grind a couple of bits out of here because they were sticking out and it wasn't sitting flat. So that's sitting on there, that's sitting on there, and then I can bring this back and that's now sitting on there. Um, I've also cut another piece which is going to go in between here. So the beauty of this is because I can actually now take this out, weld it square, weld it all around and then put it back in again to check that it's all sitting where it needs to go. And the same with the front. I can sort of work out where it's going to go. I'll just leave it sitting up there. I can work out where it's going to go. I can level it all up. So 
I've got a level here. Um, so what I would do, it might not be sitting level at the moment. Let's see. Um, no, so it's not level at the moment. It's miles away from level. The side's got to come up. Let's see what I've got here. Let's see if I can bring it up to level. Okay, so that's now sitting level that way. So that way. And then I'm going to check that it's level this way, uh, which it is. So we've got level both ways. So now what it means is that I could potentially put that on there, get that sitting level, and I know that it's level with the rest of the chassis because the chassis is level and this is level. So I could just tack weld that in there in place, and that would be great. Obviously, I've got to make sure that it's sitting in the centre as well. Um, and it needs to be level that way as well, which it basically is. So by using the level, I can set everything up and make sure it's pretty well straight and square or as square and straight as we need. So from here, what I also need to do now is um, put the piece in here and then I need to make a bit of an internal frame that's going to come down on the inside of here and then put strength around where the axle is. Um, and then I need to find out where the right angle drive is going to fit. So the right angle drive is going to be somewhere in here not quite sure where yet. Um, I'll have to make up a frame that fits in here to mount this too. Now these pieces of steel here are not actually level to the chassis because it actually goes up as you go along. So I can't use these as levels, but I can use the chassis as levels once it's all welded in. So when I set up the right angle drive, I'll have to make sure that this is sitting level as well. So from here, a bit more chassis work to do, but the basic stuff is right. I know I've got the uh, the length of the chassis right uh, as I like it, and then we'll weld those bits up. So come over to the bench and I'll just show you another couple of bits and pieces I've been working on, because I've always got about a hundred things going on at once. Um, so what I've decided to do with the steering was, um, I was going to use much bigger bar, but it ended up being a drama to try and get bearings of the right size and the stuff that works. So I'm actually going to use the steering bar that was in it. Uh, what I've done is I've got a couple of bearings. I uh, got these off uh, Peter at Motive. So um, these are going to go at the top of here. What I've also done is I've taken this part out of the steering wheel that was in the old plastic steering wheel. So I've removed this bit and that splines onto there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weld this onto the plate that goes on that I come out my steering wheel to. So I'll actually be able to pull it on and off and move it if I need to. So I thought that was quite a, quite a clever idea. I've got one of these universals from uh, Peter at Motives as well. And I'm going to put that in between there. So we're going to have the shaft coming down from the top down to the universal. The universal then is going to go onto this part, which is the where I've cut the actual piece together. Uh, and I'm also going to use this bottom part, which is also splined. I'm going to weld my piece that actuates it onto this. So I'll probably grind away a bit of this and then weld my actuator onto into, into this. So again, I can pull it off. And if I want to be one spline one way or one spline the other, I can. It also means that I can pull it apart. So what's going to end up happening is we're going to have the bearing at the bottom. We're going to have the universal joint and then going through the hole so it comes straight down through. That'll be on one end where the steering will be adjusted to. And this will be where the actuator will come off as well. So steering's pretty well sorted now. Obviously, we've got to make the frame to fit it in. The last thing I want to show you is when it comes to making the uh, steering rods, I get some 10 mil bar and um, some heme joints, uh, rod ends, whatever you want to call them. And all I do is cut a thread, a thread on the end of there, and it means that I can just screw these on. Obviously, you put a lock nut on there as well, and it means you've got a bit of adjustment. It's not as easy to adjust because the thread at the other end is going to be the same. It's not left, right threads, but it's going to allow you to make something that's going to give you a little bit of adjustment and bolt it together. Now, the other beauty of this is because it's mild steel, if you have a big accident and hit something, this will bend and it means you won't break steering parts. So I always think it's a good idea to do that. So that's about it for today uh, or this evening. Um, so, um, yeah, progress is good. Uh, I think we're making it look quite, quite tidy. And um, until next time, business garage.